a generational talent inevitably rises, transforming the game and elevating everyone around them, much like a rising tide lifts a boat. In swimming, it was Michael Phelps. In boxing, it was Muhammad Ali. But in baseball, didn't Michael Phelps like get caught for like using steroids or something like that, bro? Like using like performance enhancing drugs? I don't know. I feel like using Michael Phelps as the first is that was kind of cheating. Oh, Babe Ruth. For Facts. women's MMA, Ronda Rousey took Ronda the Rousey. while Serena Williams dominated women's tennis. I uh, in the NBA's darkest he, days, he, the, he just named all my goats in one like three seconds. The league was struggling. It was Larry Bird and Magic Johnson who brought it back to life. Then came Michael Jordan, and just like that, the NBA transformed from a league on the verge of collapse in the 70s to a global powerhouse by the 90s. It's a not a trouble. That's the impact of generational talents, what they can truly achieve. Now, as we all know, the WNBA has struggled for decades and is often seen as a league in disarray. Despite their efforts, nothing seemed to reverse the tide as they continue to lose millions year after year after year. We're asking for, you know, a similar, not even the same shared revenue, but a similar percentage of revenue shared. Then, almost as if their prayers were finally answered, Caitlin Clark emerged. Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. <laughs> Literally, though. As a devoted NBA fan for nearly two decades, I can honestly say I've never seen anyone quite like her. The NBA was already a dominant force when I became a super fan, so I never experienced one individual having this level of influence on a league. She single-handedly changed the perception of an entire sports association in a way I've never witnessed before. I, I'm gonna go on the record and say she's the best female collegiate player ever. Now, here's where things get amusing for us, but downright dangerous for the WNBA. In the NBA, there's a phrase called fumbling the bag. We saw it when Nerland's no- I don't, okay, I, that's- from all the bag isn't just an NBA term, brother. It's just a term in general, bro. He said in the NBA, there's a term called fumble in the bag, brother. It's just a saying. It, it, it exists in life, bro. You know what I'm saying? You can fumble the bag. You could like you can get like a good, a good high paying job, and I mean, you know what I'm saying? And fumble that bag, you know? Fumbling the bag is just like, like, is it what it, what it sounds like? You know what I'm saying? Getting a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then messing it up where that money is no, no longer coming to you. You feel me, mate? Noel turned down a $70 million contract that is only insane. to settle for $4 million. That is insane, and bro. $70 million? Dang, bro. Dang. That's like that's like Le'Veon Bell, bro. Remember when Le'Veon Bell was on the uh, um, the Steelers? And he was, trying, he was trying to hold out because he, he was like, ah, I'm worth more. I'm worth more, right? Bro, ended up getting traded. I think like he he would have been one of the highest paying running backs at that time, but like, I like he 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 from a, he from a horror, bro. I think he went from like, it would have been like a hundred some million to like literally like thirty million for like not even like like ten guarantees or something like that. I don't know the exact details, but I do know it was a generational fumble. And I'm gonna lie. Again, when Dennis Schroeder rejected an eighty million dollar deal, only to end up with six million. Now it looks like the WNBA is fumbling their golden opportunity with Caitlin Clark. Hey, LeBron, you are 100% right on these girls hating on Caitlin Clark. Y'all petty girls. <laughs> if they're not careful, we might just see Caitlin playing in Stop another climbing. league. And if that happens, the WNBA could slide right back into being the punchline it's been for nearly two decades. What she's accomplished, give her her flowers. Oh Stop being petty, all you women out there. Give her her she flowers. She got your ass charters. She bringing all y'all this money to the table, but y'all being petty like dudes. Like dudes? What you mean? Basketball is full of stories petty? about players who, feeling undervalued, walked away from their teams. Scottie Pippen and the Chicago Bulls. Jimmy Butler and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Kyrie Irving and the Cleveland Cavaliers. And most recently, Clay Thompson and that, the Golden State Warriors. That last, I don't know, I feel like the last two would kind of hit a little different, like um, Thompson and Irving. But, but I, like, what if I picture Irving, bro? 
I just see him with the, I, I, I literally, I can't, I can't not see him. Well, just a short time ago, the WNBA made a completely baffling move with Caitlin Clark. And honestly, if I were her, I'd be feeling pretty underappreciated right now. You see, when the 2024 regular season ended. Okay, bro, shout out to whoever making the background music. You feel me, bro? Yo, it is keeping me locked right now. I'm not gonna lie to you. The background music is keeping me locked in. The award winners were already obvious. MVP, Rookie of the Year, Sixth Woman, Defensive Player, the whole line. Kidding, Clark, kidding, Clark, All that kidding, was Clark, left kidding, was the official announcements. Well, on September 22nd, the WNBA officially crowned Asia Wilson as the league MVP. Naturally, with Caitlin Clark being the best thing to ever happen to the WNBA, we expected her announcement to come next. But three days later, on September 25th, they announced the most improved player instead. No big deal, Caitlin's recognition was going to be next, right? Well, on September 27th, instead of her name, they rolled out a list of records broken in the 2024 season. I couldn't help but laugh. I mean, seriously, what were they thinking? But still no big deal, right? I mean, Caitlyn's announcement was going to come any day now. Well, then came September 29th, one full week after the MVP was revealed, and instead of Caitlyn, they announced the Defensive Player of the Year. I laughed again. Everyone else was thinking, what's going on? Well, bro, nah, they, they, they're just saving the best for last. You feel me, bro? You know what I'm saying? They're saving the best for last. That's that's definitely what's going on here. They're not going, they're not going, they're not, they're not, they're not, not going to give her flowers. But later that same day, the WNBA made another announcement. This had to be it, we thought. Caitlin's moment. Except, it wasn't. They announced Cheryl Reeve as coach and executive of the year instead. Who the f is Cheryl Reeve, bro? <laughs> At this point, things were getting ridiculous. Caitlin Clark was the biggest sensation the WNBA had ever seen. I and she was lie. head and shoulders above every other rookie. So, why wasn't she being announced? Head and she shoulders had not to sponsored, be next, by the way. Right? Not sponsored, well, by the way. Not quite. On September 30th, the WNBA made another announcement. This time, it was about their expansion draft for the 13th franchise, the Golden State Valkyries. Seriously, at this point, everyone was asking, where in the world was Caitlin Clark? On October 2nd, another press release came out, and guess what? It was for the 2024 Kim Parat Sportsman Award. <laughs> Unbelievable. I literally laughed to myself. You're Yo. going to announce the Sportsmanship Award before the Golden Girl? By now, fans online were getting restless and the comments started the, pouring in. Yo, the Kawhi laugh in there is freaking, it got me going to laugh. I noticed you still haven't congratulated Caitlin Clark on a Rookie of the Year Award. Why is that? Another one read, Posting this while hiding your Rookie of the Year Caitlin Clark is the type of move that shows why the league has been so unsuccessful. And then there was, what about Rookie of the Year? Are you going to send it to Caitlyn via cash on delivery and wrapped in fish paper? <laughs> Finally, someone summed it up perfectly. Bro, what? The WNBA's trolling at this point, laughing emoji. Tashi. But anyway, finally, October 3rd rolled around nearly two weeks ago. October 3rd? Bro, it's October? <laughs> Wait, time out. It's October 20th, chat. What the... What the? Oh, look. After the MVP announcement, and they finally announced Caitlyn. But it wasn't all sunshine and celebrations. Something just didn't feel right. You see, Caitlyn Clark was hands down the best rookie of the 2024 class by a mile. She wasn't just dominating among rookies. She was literally in the MVP conversation. Record after record fell at her feet, and she even took her team from the bottom of the conference to the playoff hunt. She was that good. Yet, the WNBA committed basketball blasphemy by refusing to give her a unanimous Rookie of the Year vote and handing one to Angel Reese instead. Should have been unanimous. Should have been. been unanimous. It should have been unanimous. What did it? Uh. Caitlin got 66 votes, and Angel, half my rebounds are from my own Mrs. Reese, got <laughs> one vote to ruin the party. All right, bro. <laughs> 
Why he do that to Angel Reese though? Like why he do that? Have my rebounds <laughs> about my own misses, bro. Bro, you can they can still get good with whoa. English there got hard for a second. Bro, they can still go get the ball, even if I miss, you know what I'm saying? But hey, Angel just still want she just want the ball more, you feel me, man? It's a it's a it's a it's about like compact like how, how much heart Angel really got, you know what I'm saying, bro? You know I'm not gonna let you just 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 like slander her name like that, man. You know what I'm saying? She a grinder, bro, you know what I'm saying? She throw it up, she missed, I'm gonna get that rebound, put it back up, you know what I'm saying? You know how hard it is to fall and get back up and fall and get back up again, you know what I'm saying? Falling is easy, bro. Getting back up is the hard part, bro. Missing is easy, bro. Getting the rebound to put it back? That's a difficult part. I ain't gonna lie. So we're not just gonna make, you know what I'm saying, mate? Alright. <laughs> back to the back to the story. For Caitlin, this was a huge slap in the face. I mean, just look at the comparison between the two. Bro, I feel like the WNBA want these two women to hate each other so bad, bro. I get it, you know what I'm saying? Iowa, um, LSU. That was a huge thing, you know what I'm saying, bro? But I feel like they want them low-key. Because these two months low-key are bringing the, the league, the WNBA, so much bread. It's actually ridiculous, you know what I'm saying, bro? It's actually ridiculous. Ain't gonna lie. Ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like they just, they just, they just, they just, they just, they just want them to not like each other. You know what I'm saying, bro? So they're gonna do everything in their power to make sure these ladies, when they come together, first of all, it's gonna be, it's gonna be breaking numbers. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be breaking numbers. You know what I'm saying? Can you bless me? You know what I'm saying? Money wise, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? So it's it's really it's really tragic. I ain't gonna lie, cause I feel like I feel like they, like, I feel like, they, like I don't I don't know if they could be friends or whatever, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they could be friends, but like they definitely don't gotta hate each other. You know what I'm saying? For your, for some for some for, for some money, for some money. I ain't gonna lie. Can you bless me? Money wise. <laughs> Caitlin Yo, beat Angel if you get where that's from, you're a real one. Three to one in the regular season matchups. Caitlin led her team to third in the conference, while Angel's team finished dead last. And when you Angel Angel also got hurt halfway. I don't know when she got hurt. I know I know she got hurt though. Dive into the individual stats. The gap between them becomes even more ridiculous. Points per game, assists, steals, field goal percentage, three-point percentage, free throw percentage, effective field goal percentage, and heck, even blocks. Well, you feel like dominated that. <laughs> in every one of these categories. Yo! But when you say it like that, damn! Damn! That's crazy, I ain't gonna lie. The only stat Angel leads in is rebounds. And even that's skewed since she grabs a lot of her own misses and stays in late to pad her stats. Sheesh. How did the WNBA manage to rob Caitlin Clark of a unanimous Rookie of the Year award when the picture is as clear as this? Picture perfect. Anyway, Paint a perfect here's picture. what WNBA fans had to say about this. I really want to know who did the one vote. Like, what type of people <laughs> do you have to be? <laughs> Give me a break. This should be unanimous. Arguably the best rookie season of all time. Nah, that... On purpose, so she wouldn't win unanimous. Jealousy is a bitter perfume. And uh, here's one more fan comment that sums up what a lot of people are thinking about that one vote. Swoops is a POS. <laughs> Sheesh, guys. I hear that. It's cool. wild I'll laugh that one more time. do this to the one person in their 20 plus years of existence who could actually pull them out of obscurity and into the spotlight. For the last decade, they've practically been begging for money at every turn. I, I do feel like the pay gap would be something that, you know, we could just take a donation around the NBA, maybe. They were so strapped for cash that donation. Kyrie Irving had to step in and support them during the pandemic. Have you, Kyrie? Now, given how Caitlyn has been treated all year, the constant abuse she's faced both on and off the court, imagine what would happen if Caitlyn Clark left the WNBA. I got goosebumps, Imagine her getting fed up with the on-court cheap video. shots, the verbal assaults off the court, the constant passive-aggressive jabs from all sides, and the league's refusal to step in. What if she decided to head overseas, like Gabby Williams, who just left the Seattle Storm to play in Europe? Or like Elizabeth Cambage and Diana Taurasi, who both left the WNBA for stints abroad. 
Sure, those players all left to chase bigger paychecks, but imagine if Caitlyn left simply because she was done with all the non-basketball drama she's been forced to endure. I feel like I'm getting hammered. Um... Here's the reality the WNBA needs to understand. Caitlin Clark doesn't need the WNBA. The WNBA needs Caitlin Clark. I mean, Caitlin's very first playoff series pulled in 1.8 million viewers for game one and 2.5 million for game two. To put that in perspective, the average viewership of this first round series alone has already surpassed any WNBA finals ratings in league history. That's how transformative Caitlin Clark has been for the league. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it. Caitlin Clark is the reason why a lot of great things is going to happen for the WNBA. Honestly, with the way they've been treating her, saying things like the W is more than one player, leaving her off the Olympic team despite being in the MVP conversation, and allowing that was some players weird... to physically target bro, her. Bro, they just been, they just, they, they just be doing weird stuff, bro. They be giving, like, this say that's weird energy, bro. Like that, that ass, bro. You feel me, broski? Just weird energy. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say, like, when um Jordan went to the league. Because Jordan went to the league and he got bruised up ain't gonna lie, bro. Nobody liked Jordan. <laughs> Nobody liked Jordan, bro. But that was the I, 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 that was the players in the I feel like the I don't know. I don't know. I didn't I didn't I'm not even gonna pretend like I know because I was I wasn't even lie back then, ain't gonna lie, bro. But from what I've seen, bro. Nah, 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 nah. From what I seen, Jordan got beat up, ain't gonna lie. And the refs did nothing. <laughs> I mean, he went to the line sometimes, bro. But yo, but that was an aggressive time, you know what I'm saying, bro? That was like everybody was playing bully ball back then. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I don't know, bro. Her without consequence. It'd but be yeah, hilarious they, to see how the league would react if they're they just I don't I feel like I I feel like like we be forgetting like these corporations, like their main goal is one is to increase revenue but they be getting lost in the sauce sometimes you know what i'm saying bro they be getting lost in the sauce sometimes bro you know what i'm saying like like the wnba is, is the w is more than one player mm. let's say, let's take this one player away and see how much that that revenue really takes and then and then and then we could talk about you know what i'm saying then we could talk about uh, 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 if it's if you guys are more than one player you know what i'm saying how you struggle for years you know what i'm saying for years struggling to break even and then de -de 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 -de, something comes along, boom, you're finally breaking. Not only are you breaking even, bro, you're actually making like you're 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 thriving. And you don't wanna you don't, you don't wanna help out a person, you don't you don't wanna you ain't you ain't, you ain't gonna get the person that, that helps you out the fucking the fucking flowers and shit like that, bro. Like you actually you actually make it harder for the, 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 the individual that made you <clears throat> profitable. You're gonna you're gonna make the life harder, bro. That's weird. That's weird. Is that not weird, bro? One golden ticket slipped away. Stephen A. Smith has. I don't, I don't think she's gonna like. I don't think she's gonna leave or anything like that. She might. I don't know. Imagine she goes to real or some shit. Already called this out in the past. You make the call because of the betterment of the whole in the end. That is not compromising your integrity. That is business, and y'all are gonna find that out. Business. It would actually be pretty funny, considering Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark's so-called biggest rival, has repeatedly claimed that people tune into the WNBA because of her as well. The reason why we watch women's basketball is not just because of one person, it's because of me too, and I want y'all to realize that. Well, about what Angel... <sighs> she's not wrong though, Loki. Loki, she's not wrong though. But a lot more people watching Caitlin Clark, I ain't gonna lie. Just that's, just, that's, that's, just, that's just the truth, I ain't gonna lie. Let's be real. This is why we watch Caitlin Clark. Her skill set, the deep threes, her ability to break down defenses, pure skill. Now, here's Angel Reese's game. Grabbing her own rebounds and taking 75% of her shots from within 10 feet, where she still manages to score less than 50% of the time. <laughs> if Caitlin left the WNBA, the league would seriously regret it. And this would go down as the biggest fumble in sports history. Facts. In business, when you have a golden egg, you're supposed to guard it with everything you've got and let it grow into a money-making machine. Facts. Instead, they're literally letting her get attacked on the court, acting innocent like they did nothing wrong, and then, just to top it off, they play victim. 
It's a lot of words, bro. If you're wondering what I mean by all of this, <laughs> make sure to check out this video where I break down nah. some of the disgusting. Yeah, the video. Ah, that didn't mean that. Thanks to go from the 80s. And I didn't even click on the actual video, but that's low key. That was a fire video. I ain't gonna lie. But his music and the Kawhi lap. Uh -huh. <laughs> Put a little bit of unique flair onto the video because I see like little, I guess, is this a little documentary kind of, kind of not only documentary, but kind of like that um, vibe, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like that vibe. And then he like, he like mixed it up by putting like the little Kawhi laugh and the little, the music was kind of different as well, you know what I'm saying? Stop clawing me, bro. Yo, if you ever think about getting a pet, bro, getting a pet, don't. Don't get a pet, bro. I feel like pets are worse than kids. That's debatable, but I low key feel like pets are worse than kids, bro. Hey, like, subscribe, you know what I'm saying, and leave uh, leave a comment. Let me let me know what you like, who you who your who your WNBA goat is, you know what I'm saying, bro. Who your goat is, you know what I'm saying, in, in the comments, bro. I, I'll catch you guys in the next one. You feel me?